Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the iNav for Beginners 2023 series. So far we have gone and talked about what iNav is, how you set it up, and then we installed it inside this wing. This is the Baby AI Wing Pro, has a Walksnail 1S unit in the nose, and it has a Matek F405 WMN flight controller with a GPS and all the other goodies inside too, Express LRS receiver. If you haven't already watched the rest of the series, go and check it all. Uh, the link is down below. This one in particular is about how do you maiden a model like this so that it works successfully. Maidening a plane can be a nail-biting experience. However, using this process that I've developed over the past five or six years, it kind of works every time, particularly if you have iNav in it and set up as we've just gone through. First thing I recommend is make sure that everything is secure and tight, nothing is loose and that nothing is broken or nothing is unscrewed. Make sure your prop is on and nice and tight. Don't forget, we took it off to do all the testing last time. Also, with it connected to iNav Configurator on the bench, turn off the radio and make sure that the little parachute at the top of the screen goes red. That's really important. You need to make sure that failsafe is detected. And that means that if there is a problem with the connection between the radio and the model, the model will then initiate the return to home as we've set up. Now at the field, what I'd recommend is that you power on the model, that you go into any mode that you want. Uh, I, by default, will start off in horizon mode, move the controls and make sure that they're moving correctly. When you pull the elevator down, both controls should move up. And when the aileron is moved left to right, the direction of the stick should be the aileron that moves up, the other one should move down. Make sure that that all works and make sure that the on-screen display and everything is in your goggles. It will take a moment or two for the GPS to lock up. If you haven't flown it for ages, it could take up to a couple of minutes. Once it has a 3D lock, then arm it. Now, because we have auto launch permanently enabled, it's immediately going to be ready to throw into the air. And that also means that the way I've set it up is that the throttle will start to spin. So the way I tend to do it is I will have it in my hand ready to throw and then I will arm it on the radio and then raise the throttle. When I raise the throttle, the prop will start spinning. That tells me we are ready to go. Auto launch is ready and I'll chuck it into the air and then the rest of it is kind of up to iNav. Once it is in the air, then I'll put my goggles down and then as soon as I move the sticks on the radio, it'll cancel the auto launch flight and drop back into horizon mode where it will self-level. Now there's a good chance that it will be the rising or sinking because we set that offset last time at about four degrees. That's probably going to be miles too much for this. So what I would do is while flying in horizon, enable auto level, which we set up on a separate switch and just fly around for a little bit probably 30 seconds a minute, that's going to let the model check and change the attitude in the air so that at a cruise speed, we're not climbing and we're not sinking. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna turn auto level off and then I will fly around for a little bit more. At this point, the surfaces on the model will be trimmed so that they are neutral and that at that default cruise speed where it's not sinking and it's not climbing or gaining altitude the servos will all be sorted so after about another minute i'll click it into manual mode and make sure that is the case and then i'll fly a bit in manual mode and once i'm happy that that's all working that's the main part of the setup done and we only have to do that the first time once i'm happy with all the manual stuff then i can get to some more of the nitty gritty i might engage return to launch just to make sure that it does come back and that will give me the peace of mind to know that if anything goes wrong as I continue to maiden the plane I'm going to get it back and it confirms that the GPS and everything is working perfectly. If that all works then I'm going to tune it. Now to tune it I'm going to do is put the model into acro mode. Acro mode is the flight mode where there isn't any mode selected, the default mode essentially. And then I'm going to enable auto tune. I'm going to fly and I'm going to flick the model from side to side initially, probably about 20 times. Initially it'll feel quite mushy, but it'll get better and better. And then I will flick the nose 20 times, then go back and do each of them at least one more round. And at the end of that, it should be flying quite nicely. That's going to tune both the feed forward and also the rates as well. 
Once I'm happy that feels good, and I'm going to turn off auto-tune and go back into manual mode and see if the acro settings and the manual mode settings, I'll compare the two to see if they feel very similar. If they do, then you know what? I'm going to be happy that that tune is good as well. If it is good, then I'm going to probably pop it back into horizon mode, bring it into land and disarm it. All those settings will be saved back on the model and we are in great shape. Then next flight, I don't need to do the tuning. I don't need to do the trimming. I can just arm it. Auto launch is going to take it into the air and I can fly it around and set the mode up exactly as I like. So that's the process. Let me go to the field and give you a whistle stop tour of me actually doing it live. If you want to see me do it and see exactly how long it takes. So here at the field, I've powered everything up. I've waited for the GPS to get a lock. And I've also done my test to make sure the control surfaces are moving in the right direction. I've also then picked up the model in horizon mode and tilted it side to side to make sure that the control surfaces move in the right direction too. And that is as the wing rises, the control surface should rise on that wing as well. And if it's that way round, then we're in good shape. Once we have a GPS lock, then we are ready to fly. And we're going to power up the FPV equipment so I can switch and do the flight with FPV. So now we're ready to fly. What I'll do is I will put it and arm the model. That's going to immediately put me into horizon but auto launch, raise the throttle to 100% and throw it. And we are climbing in auto launch. As soon as I move the sticks on the radio, we are out of auto launch and it'll fail back into horizon mode. And because we have the radio with all the stuff on, with the INAV Lua script, that is gonna be telling me exactly what's going on. So now we're flying. I'm just gonna fly in horizon mode, just for a moment, just to make sure we're okay. I've throttled back to about 50%. The wind is really bouncing us around today. This is not an ideal day to fly, however, Sometimes you have to fly with the weather you get. So we're in horizon. We're doing a pretty good job. So let's just turn it around and come back towards ourselves. 90%. So everything is looking pretty good. Now we are gaining and losing height a little bit. I'm going to turn on auto level and I'm going to fly around. That should then figure out what the offset needs to be in order for it to maintain the altitude at this cruise throttle. Now I'm going to have to fly around for a little while while I'm doing this um, because it's going to try and figure it out but that's okay. I'll just do a couple of kind of circuits in all the orientation because the wind at the moment is kind of coming from our two o'clock position so it's pushing me around but that's a little bit better. So I'm a little bit happier with that. I'm going to turn auto level off. We're still climbing a little bit as we come into the wind, but that's okay. Let me get down because the wind is higher uh, at the more altitude. Again, we're still bouncing, but actually that's, that's not bad. That's, we're losing a little bit of altitude now, but that's okay. So the next job then is to see what it's like in manual mode, um, because now as we've flown around like this, the servos should have been trimmed by auto, uh, continuously trimmed servos. So I'm going to try, now this could be interesting, I might have to go straight back in the horizon because the wind might blow me around. So I'm into manual mode. So this is me flying it now, there's no auto level or anything. So that's actually not bad. See what a roll, roll rate is. Roll rate's pretty good. That's not bad. Actually, that's not bad at all. Okay, now we know that we'll pop it back into Horizon for the moment. Last thing we're going to do then is now we know it's trimmed, now we got with the offsets done, we'll try and tune it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it into Acro mode and I'm going to turn on auto tune and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go from side to side side to middle and initially it's going to feel really mushy and quite artificial bring it back towards myself 
and we're just going to we're just going to keep doing this and it's going to get right starting to feel better already that is feeling a lot better let me turn around again we need to do this about 20 times the stops aren't bad there's a little bounce which potentially means that the the tune needs a little bit of work but actually this will work fine so the auto tune left and right is pretty good okay let's do some pitch tuning so I'm going to put the nose up and down again let's turn around and come back towards us and we're doing the nose up and down And that's starting to feel better too okay so now we're going to go left and right again okay that definitely starts to feel better that's starting to feel more like the roll rate in manual let's turn it around one more time that's definitely starting to feel better I might need to do the auto level again when it's a bit calmer because i think that the offset angle is a little bit too low oh wow that's feeling much more responsive great stuff okay so we'll bring it round again and this time we'll do the pitch again up and down pitch is always less responsive but actually that's starting to get a little bit more exciting again if anything starts to go wrong at any part of this what you do is you flick it back into horizon uh, but actually this is getting really good this is starting to feel nice so a little bit more lefty righty yeah that's feeling very responsive the end has a little bounce that might mean we need to play with probably the p gain probably needs a little bit of a tweak but that's not terrible we'd have to try it on a really calm day more upsy downsy for pitch Let's bring it around again get a little bit far away i don't want to get too far away wow that's actually feeling much 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 better right so that should be automatically being saved into the flight controller and the way we're going to do it we're going to take it out or out of auto tune now and what we'll do is we will bring that in because that looks like we have it all trimmed out i think we are in great shape i think the next job then is going to be just to uh, take it back and have a look at what it says on the computer. Let's do that next. So back on the bench, back in iNav, let's just connect. A couple of things should have changed after that maiden flight. I'd always recommend saving the configuration so we can see that the midpoint of those two servos have been changed. That continuously trimmed servo setup has done that for us. So now that means that the manual mode is all set, which is great. We go into the tuning tab we should also be able to see that the rates have changed for the roll and also for the pitch as well and those will be much more close closer to what it's capable of with the throws that the model is set to last thing it's worthwhile checking is just seeing how much the fixed wing offset angle has changed. This is the one that it refers to in here. Having auto level set in the early part of the maiden flight should have changed this. It's gonna be interesting to see whether or not it actually has. I think we set it at four originally and checking here, it's still four. So I would probably redo that on a very calm day just to make sure that that actually spot on. But that is the whole process. I would just do a diff all and put it somewhere safe so you have it for reference. So that's the end of this little four video series, taking a load of components, putting them inside something this baby AR Wing Pro, taking it to the field and getting it flying and do the basic setup. If you have any questions, then do pop them down below, but hopefully if you are new to iNav and we're trying to figure out how easy it is, that's how easy it is. Once you have done a couple of iNav setups, you can do the entire thing on the bench in about half an hour and that includes making yourself a cup of coffee and then the first flight that maiden flight is probably going to last six to eight minutes and you'll get through all that basic setup and your model is going to be ready to rock and roll so thank you for sticking with the series thank you for watching the videos and as always happy flying
Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.